Hey you guys, it's Jen 315. I'm back again with another video. I just got off work and it is hot because <laughs> it is still summer in Chicago. But um, basically I just wanted to uh, encourage you all um, to love, like genuinely love, like uh, just, uh, you know, seek the Lord and uh, desire to have his heart, you know, you know, daily just pray and meditate that God will give you his heart, you know, the heart of his son, Jesus Christ, that will enable you to be able to love. Um, I'm just uh, thinking about myself every day, um, ever since I first came to Christ and actually got into a relationship with you know, the Trinity, I, um, that was my main thing. I would ask God, Lord, help me to love because I was really unloving. I was an ice queen. I was so cold hearted. I had, I just was incapable of loving and the closest thing to love, uh, I could give that to my mom and that was about it. And I just generally did not like people. Um, I liked being friendly and polite to people and I could fake like I loved a person to the core but I like generally inside my heart it was no feeling um, regarding that person except with the exception of my mom and so basically um, the reason I'm doing this video is because my I got off work and my mom told me um, that my sister my um, one of my older sisters, the one I'm closest to, who I always brag about being my best friend. Um, she was like, uh, she had, because she gets in these little fits where she goes off and, you know, like I mentioned in one of my previous videos where she just talks about how everyone's against her and she just, you know, doesn't like the family and all this extra stuff. And so she was telling me, um, basically, my mom was telling me, basically, she was having one of her moods again, and she was uh, complaining and going off and saying everyone's stabbing her in the back. And at first, usually, she'll have her few select and family members that she'd say um, haven't done anything to her. And I used to be included in that few select, but apparently today, she uh, wanted to include me with a group of backstabbers. And so the point of the video is I just want to share the mindset and mentality that I have in this life. So to help encourage you guys, because like so often when I'm like encouraging people or telling people about things, they're like, how do you deal with it? You know, how do you not let things bother you? Because I'm like, seriously, please don't come to me with foolishness. I don't have time because my mindset, like I literally was telling one of my managers uh, like last week or something, I was telling him like, I'm so spacey and like I'm so fixed and focused on my relationship with God and his kingdom coming back to earth and me fulfilling my purpose and mission here on earth before Christ returns. That's what I'm focused about. So if you aren't talking about that, if you're not talking about that and you're not trying to get there, if you're not trying to help me get there, then we have nothing to talk about. And like everything that's coming out of your mouth is quite insignificant. And so I was like, why would I let stupid stuff bother me? This is not productive. This is getting me nowhere. It's doing nothing for me. You know, you're not paying my bills. You're not, do you know? So the whole point is don't get so obsessed with this person has offended me or something has gotten me upset. Focus and meditate. This is why I always tell people meditate on. So like me personally, salvation alone is enough for me to worship Christ for all eternity. So meditate on the cross. Meditate on the great sacrifice that Christ paid for you. Meditate on how much he loved us so much so that he didn't even see it as a big issue to die and give his life for you. And you're over here whining and complaining about what? That you feel like somebody stabbed you in the back? You're over here whining and complaining about you feel like this person looked at you wrong. You feel like this person talking about you when nine times out of ten it's the voices in your own head you have a problem oh you know they cheated me you know they owe me money or oh he cheated on me she cheated on me oh I feel like they're being dishonest get over it get over it let your love for man and for people but first let your love for God be so great that you end up loving the things that he loves and he loves all people even the sinners he even loved those who would reject him hate him spin his face what did christ tell judas when he came to betray him what did he say 
He said he called him Fred. I read that. I said, you are so beautiful. Like, who can have that mentality? Like, I'm coming to betray you, and you're going to call me friend anyway? Like, that is the mindset we need to have. Think about the nails being driven in his head. Think about how we spat in his face. Yes, we. Because our sins put him on the cross, but his love kept him there. And I love thinking about how he just had to let Peter know. Because Peter was like, what, what are you guards doing? No, it's not going down like that. Peter sliced off one of the servant's ears. And he's like, no. And then Jesus is like, put your sword up. You know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. He's like, this ain't war. I didn't come on my first coming to judge you all and kill you all. You know, I'm a merciful, gracious, loving God. I came to redeem you all, reconcile you unto myself. I'm coming in love, okay? This is a love thing, you know? And so he said, he had to let Peter know, remind him who he was. He said, can I not right now pray of my father and command 12 legions of angels? That's the thing. People think when you choose to be silent, they think you're being weak. Honey, there is far more that I can do far more but i'm choosing not to because of my love for you because of the fact that i am loved by love himself and so yeah i could slap you smack you curse you out you know do all matter of evil towards you what is that gonna do what who does that profit you know as with the times we're living in people going crazy losing their minds they so easily are tempted to just do that like oh you cuss me out smack you know like no that's not my mentality you know whenever i catch myself um being irritated or offended by someone i'm always constantly praying lord take these feelings from me and i tell him i'm like help me to love this person help me to love this person like i remember this one time i just just couldn't i just found myself just not liking the way a person was behaving and it wasn't really I was like, so what? Let them be themselves. You know, I had to check myself and do the, my, you know, reflections. And I, I had to pray like, Lord, take this from me. Because, you know, me, I'm a unique individual. And so I'm like, with you being as quirky and, you know, unorthodox as you are, how can you sit over here and be irritated by the way somebody else is acting? You know, let them be themselves. You always tell people that you got to be true to you. So let them be true to themselves. If they are, you know, even if they're not, who cares? But... Yeah, so that's really the point. Like, you let your love for God be so great that you end up loving his people, whether they love you back or not. Like, I keep telling myself, help me, Lord, to make up in my mind whether, um, don't let the actions of others dictate your reaction. Like, if you being mean, rude, and disrespectful, I'm not going to have that cause me to be mean, rude, and disrespectful in return. I'm still going to be kind, loving, and pleasant. And that may be perceived as weak, but I it's really strong to control yourself. It is a strength. Like, self-control is a strength. And it's highly commendable. Like, to all my, you know, pull back people, all my people that don't just flip off the lid, it takes a lot of strength and power to, you know, refrain yourself from doing something foolish. Um, any old Joe Schmo can, uh, you know, just uh, act off of instinct. Wow, congratulations. You acted in an emotional state that took no control at all. But, you know, don't feel like, Lord, how long, you know, I've been suffering, I've been going through, I've been putting up with this for weeks, months, years, even. It doesn't seem like anything's changing. Well, hey, do you think Christ enjoyed the cross? You know, think of how he suffered. We sped in his face. You know, we betrayed him. We uh, placed the crown of thorns on his head. We whipped him. We beat him. We scourged him all night long beyond recognition. He was unrecognizable. We placed nails in his hands and his feet and nailed him to a cross. We had him carry his own cross with his bleeding, whipped up back. And then we have the audacity. After he died and breathed his last breath to pierce him in the side just to double check that he was dead. You know, we got issues. So whenever you try to think about how you suffer, remember Christ said, in this life you're going to have many trials and tribulations, but be a cheer because I've already got to come to the world. And he said, if you're going to be my disciple, you got to be willing to take up your cross. If Christ suffered, he said, if they did it to the good tree, you know, how much more do you think they're going to do to you? who's not perfect, who's not blameless. So you mean to tell me all those people you heard in the past, now that you saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, oh Lord, 
How long, how long must I suffer this treatment from these people? How long should those people have suffered that you used to mistreat? Even if you didn't mistreat people before you got saved or whatever the case may be. Still, Christ suffered, so you're going to suffer. And you need to be willing to suffer. And our love for him should be greater than our suffering. So, I leave you with this question. How great is your love for Christ? How great is your love for your God? Is he your God? And I think that's all I have for you guys. Oh, and also with love, like, love will, the love of God will have you do things you don't feel like doing. Like, at work, like, at work, I was uh, put in the stock room, and normally I'm, like, cashier, and sell, or sometimes they'll put me on the sales floor, very rarely in the fitting room. But the point is, I'm usually, you know, out and about and active with the customers, you know, I have some sort of engagement, so I was in the back. And I've been in the back when I first started, but when I came back to work, I don't usually be in the stock room. So today at work, I wasn't really talking that much. Not so much I, did, I had like an attitude or anything. I just didn't really feel like talking. You know, when you're just, you know, me personally, I can talk a lot. And so it's like, sometimes I need a break from speaking. Okay. And it's like, sometimes I just like to be silent. I just like to meditate and, you know, just... I just like to keep to myself sometimes. I don't always need to be loud, especially when it's like somebody else back there who's having conversation and, you know, it's like, well, I don't really need to jump in or add anything to it. You know, they're not really talking about anything I'm interested in. So, I, but I had to remind myself to be loving because even if I don't want to speak, um, that could be perceived as rude. You know, somebody may be like, oh, you know, we're having conversation and she's not joining in. You know, she's being really quiet. She's like being standoffish you know it could be perceived as weird and so i had to ask the lord uh help me to show some love and i was even to the point like i really didn't feel like talking i even almost didn't even want to say goodbye to everybody but um i did and so um the point was i was like i gotta work on my love in the workplace for when i'm in the back because when i'm in the front you know it's easy because i'm just you know hey you know friendly loving kind you know engaging um because you know I'm around people <laughs> and I'm on display, but in the back, it's kind of like you're not being watched by the customers. It's like you're just doing your work. So it's like it's not really to talk about. Just do your work and go home. And so I was like, I have to be more loving and kind and to seem approachable because um, I don't want to seem like I have an attitude or I'm being mean or anything. So that's uh the thing i was like i was telling my mom when she told me about my sister uh considered me as a backstabber i was like i, I could care less because honestly the people who are concerned with the things of this world they have time for foolishness uh people who aren't uh you know you know like actively striving and motivating not saying that she's one of them but basically when your mind focus and attention isn't on god and his love you have time to entertain folly and stupidity, in my opinion. And so, I don't have time for it. I was like, I told my mother the situation. I was like, I don't need to explain myself to her. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Congratulations. My life is moving on and forward. And like I said earlier, what you feel towards me does not dictate my reaction and my response towards you. So I still love you, and I will still be kind to you. And as always, I will kill you with kindness. Love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. It is hot. Oh, shoot, I'm trying to see who trying to go to the beach today. I love you guys. I am going to leave a key chapter that we all need to study and meditate on daily. And that is the chapter love, 1 Corinthians 13. You guys enjoy your weekend. Bye.